Ah, boy. Uh, it's easy to think, isn't it, that other people are the problem. Boy, the human personality just loves to go down that road, doesn't it? You know, other people, their behavior, what they're thinking, the way they see the world, the way they show up. If only they could just shape up, everything would be so much better, right? If they could be different. Well, but Science of Mind teaches us that the place to change is within, right? Why? Because cause, causation, is always within us. So technically, nothing outside of us is the source of anything. What has to change is us. What is inside of us? That's where the transformation has to take place. Whenever we sort of give in to that human tendency and we want to judge and we want to criticize, we have to ask ourselves this, where am I like that person? Oh, I know, people hate that. You know, people say, oh no, not me. I am nothing like that. But science of mind says that it must be that it lives somewhere in us or we wouldn't be activated by that other person just living their life and doing what they're doing. It may also be if it, and you say, well, it doesn't live in me. There is none of that in me. <clears throat> well, maybe, maybe this is the take on it, that we judge what other people are doing so harshly that we find it unlovable. And we think, if I were anything like that, I would be unlovable. And I think that's something everybody fears on some level of their being. So I believe what we want is to live our life knowing, knowing that we are at cause. That's what we want, to live every moment of our life knowing that causation comes from within. The world is not going to be anything to us that we are not to it. Now I just used a double negative, does that make sense? The world is only gonna to be to us what we are to the world. That's, maybe that's another way to say it without the negatives. So often, we do want things to be different, don't we? I know I do, I really, really want so many things to be different. I know so many things could shift, could change, could evolve, could heal, and the world, at least in my opinion, would be a much better place. So I want things to be different than they are. You know, but what I notice so often is we don't want to have to be different. I don't want to have to change anything in me. I don't want to have to change the way I think, the way I speak, the way I look at the world. So to me, it seems like we're going through a huge crucifixion on Earth right now. You know, and so many people are dealing with huge stuff. I mean, do we know anybody who isn't dealing with huge, huge stuff right now? People dealing with illness and people dealing with inequality and injustice and lack and fear and on and on and on. There is a lot happening and it feels like crucifixion. Now, Jesus told the Jewish people that what they needed to do was to love the Romans. And I am pretty certain that that was the last thing they wanted to hear. We don't want to love who we look at as our oppressors. Right, and so one of the 12 disciples, Judas, had been with Jesus through lots of great things that he did, through these incredible miracles. He had seen Jesus feed the multitude. He had seen Jesus heal people. And he knew that Jesus had power. But for some reason, Jesus was holding back that power. And so I believe that Judas thought that he could force Jesus' hand. And that when he forced Jesus' hand, what Jesus would do is he would kick some Roman butt because he was really powerful, right? <sighs> but Jesus' message was different than that. Jesus' message was not at the level of effect, go kick some Roman butt. Jesus' message was at the level of cause, causes within, and his message was we have to love the Romans if we want to be free. It was radical then, it's radical now, this idea of loving the enemy. I mean, and I wonder, honestly, have we ever really, really tried it? You know? So Jesus actualized a level of consciousness that exists within all of us right now. This is true about all great beings that have walked on earth before us, that they've actualized a level of consciousness that exists within all of us. And this level of consciousness is of God. God is infinite power. Even over time, 
and space, because time and space are, are constructs that we have made up. So, so God is not limited by time or space. So the deliverance, now I'm going to go to the Old Testament. The deliverance of the Jewish people by Moses out of uh, the experience of Egyptian bondage represents when we ourselves are confronted with any obstacle, any darkness, or any error condition in the world. There is a power of love, there is a power of light that saves us from the darkness, the error, in the case of the Hebrew people from slavery, uh, uh, being enslaved to the Pharaoh. See, they were getting free from an external form uh, of limitation, right? But as consciousness moves along over time, you know, humanity progresses. We actually do and are evolving. Isn't that wonderful to think, okay, we're doing, we're doing better. I mean, think about this. More people are praying and meditating and doing healing work and service work and charitable work now on earth than ever before in the history of the world. You know? So um, we have the experience of getting free from external limitation. Uh, but as consciousness progresses, what happens next is another being shows up on the planet. So after Moses leads the children of Israel, um, brings them to the promised land, the next thing is Jesus, that if we have any internal bondage, right? So we were doing external, now internal bondage, any internal limit, uh, limitation, and an internal limitation might be a belief like, I'm not enough, there is not enough for me, I'm not lovable, things don't work out for me, oh, I always have to have some challenge with my health, or I always struggle with money. We would say those are forms of internal bondage, right? Internal limitation. And I, in our culture today, I believe we all know a lot about this. You know, um, maybe even more than external limitation or external restriction and bondage. But God saves us from the oppression that is inside of us. See, and all oppression is actually internal because cause is within. So all anything out here is, is a mirror reflection of what's going on in here. That's a hard part of our teaching, to think that what's happening in the world, what's happening in life outside of us is a reflection of something in here. I don't want to think that that exists in me. I don't like the idea of that. But it must be, because cause is within. We have a lot of crucifixion out here in the world. And this is because I think we have a lot of crucifixion here in us. And how I think that shows up is that that crucifixion that's in us shows up as shame. It shows up as addiction, as obsession. It shows up as lack and limitation, illness, war, hunger, on and on and on. The human personality, though, what it does is the human personality can't hold all that, so we project it out onto other people and thinking that's going to make us feel better. But if we come back to what is spiritually true is that God is infinite love, unconditional love, and we're working. We are inching our way toward that. If we think with God, if I think with God, I have access to the power of unconditional love. If you will think with God, you will have access to the power of unconditional love. And so it seems to me that there is one thing that keeps us tied to the effects of this world. You know, one thing that continually keeps us hooked into the laws of this world, and it is our judgment of other people. We have got to get this. This is so incredibly important. You know, that when we judge, we feel the effects of crucifixion. Right? Because what we put out is coming back to us, multiplied many times over. And so that feels bad. And so what happens when that feels bad is that we attack people again, and we get more crucifixion. And the cycle just continues. Because the universe we live in is based on love. God is love. We teach that. We really believe that. So every form of bondage, lack, limitation, oppression that I experience comes from my faith in the crucifixion rather than in the energy of resurrection. I judge, I create more crucifixion. So I feel bad, so then I judge more, and I get more crucifixion. Do, do we see how this operates? So my mind, my thinking, is the problem. I get it. The problem is here, in me. The problem is not outside of me. The problem is within my thinking. Right? So we don't believe in an external savior 
in the science of mind, but the Savior is also inside of us. You know? So I believe we were all created with unlimited power within us, that God in us is all-powerful, and that is the Savior. God in us that's all-powerful, the unconditional love that's within us, that is all-powerful, that will save us. But unlimited power cannot be released into our lives without unlimited love. You hear that? Unlimited power cannot come forward without unlimited love on our part. And so we begin again today. That's one of the things I love about our teaching is that every day we have a fresh start, okay? Doesn't matter how I did yesterday, I'm starting again today. We can have a life of freedom, freedom from every kind of error. I believe that that's true. See, the love of God within us is greater than anything external to us. So individually, we must know who we really, really are. You know, it says in the scriptures, know ye not that ye are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. Wow, that's pretty auspicious. Can we have love toward all people, though? Wow, that is really, really hard. So, you know, someone who I think is an incredible, incredible example of this was Mother Teresa in her work with the dying. And so, you know, when they asked her, how are you able to go and pick people up who, out of the gutter who are dying. These people who are sick and filthy and oh my gosh, how can you do that? And Mother Teresa's response was, all of these people, they are just Jesus, my beloved, in all of his distressing disguises. So she knew that all of these people were an opportunity for her to love, for her heart to be open, for God to work through her, for the spirit to flow through her and not make it about her, it was about them. So what an interesting idea, huh? To think of things, individual situations that we might want to judge and be critical of as someone like Jesus or God or love in a distressing disguise. See, all of it, all of it is a call to love. We are all the same as far as God is concerned. I believe God loves all of God's children equally. You know, that, that God looks toward us nothing but loving and family and forgiving and all the good stuff. So here's what it comes down to. If we assign fault, if we assign blame, it's like we're telling the universe, I will stay stuck. Yeah, because that absolutely keeps us stuck. We know we get what we focus on. So really, what are you focusing on? Hmm? It's a really good time to think about that. What are you focusing on? Are you focusing on what can be? Or are you focusing on what you don't want? Are you focusing on the healing? Or are you focusing on what's out of alignment? You know, are you focusing on the love and the abundance of God? Or are you focusing on the lack of love and the fear and the limitation? Because what we focus on is what we're going to get more of. If we foc so quite simply, if we focus on crucifixion, we get more crucifixion. But if we focus on more resurrection, we'll get more resurrection. See, I know it's easy to focus on what's wrong or what's missing, what's not right, what other people are doing. It takes a resurrection consciousness to see a greater truth. But I believe that we all, all have that. The limitation we experience is it's not essential to who we are. It's, it's been added. We are so much more than that. So God gives us the ability to see beyond people's errors and people's mistakes, but we have to be willing. God, I want to see beyond this. Show me that this person is more than this. See, because every limitation in our life, I think, comes from fear. And our negativity pretty much ruins everything in our life. There is not one area of your life that your negativity has added to and made your life better. So what if, what if knowing that, what if our minds served something greater, something higher? What if we sowed seeds of positivity and, and affirmation? So I've got something I would like us to say this week. This comes from the work of Emma Curtis Hopkins, one of our teachers, and, and she says, when we see an appearance, this is how we could respond. Now, heart of God, alive with truth, bring forth love. Now, heart of God, alive with truth, bring forth peace. Now, heart of God, alive with truth, bring forth freedom. Now, heart of God, alive with truth, bring forth, and you fill in what's needed.
Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now together for a moment, recognizing that we are here and now filled with the spirit of infinite God, infinite love, infinite truth, infinite wholeness. Each and every one of us, we are one with God. And further beyond this, I know that we are all connected. We are one in the mind of God with each other. And so in this awareness, I speak the word for each and every one of us that healing is happening right here, right now. I claim, I believe, I declare for us that raising up is taking place, that we let go of what does not serve because we know the world we live in is a mirror reflection of how we are on the inside. I declare for each and every one of us, we are the best we've ever been on the inside. More of God, more love, more truth pours forth from our being out into the world. And limitation, restriction, Egyptian bondage is not part of our life at all. We have learned everything we need to learn from crucifixion. And we are open, willing vessels for the resurrection of the living spirit in our lives. So we include in our prayer today our family members, our friends, parents, and children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, you name it. We include everyone we love and hold dear in our prayer. We know that they are surrounded and filled with God's spirit, that God's peace and love sustain them each and every moment of the day. We let our prayer go out into the world. So everything that grabs at our attention, we say, God is present right there. Beyond all appearance, love is real. There is harmony, there is freedom, there is abundance, there is enough for everyone on the face of the planet. I believe this is true. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams and all paths to God. I know we are blessed by being together today. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, just drinking in the infinite good of God, I say thank you, God. I release this word and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. <laughs>